Hey, Pender Bob here. I've been working like crazy on this zombie movie for the past month, and that's why you haven't seen me. But now I'm back. Oh, well. Oh, well. Is that a cat? Do zombies eat cat brains? Well, I think I'll give it a shot. Kitty, 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 come here. Oh, well. <laughs> So it turns out that eating cat brains is the way to unzombify someone. Who knew? Hmm. So as I was saying, uh, we worked on this zombie movie for a very long time now. It's pretty much done. And of course, there's nothing I can show you because the movie's not released yet. But there's something else I've been working on also at the same time. Bicycles. Because you see, the owner of our company, Real by Fake, decided just like that to buy a bicycle company. Race Inc. BMX Bicycles. And he created new models and, you know, we were going into the color changes and everything and, you know, put a little bit more cyan, more, 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 go, oh, go back, go back, go back, more red, more red. No, 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 no. I'm going to set you up with something so you can do it yourself and you can play with all the combinations possible. And this is what I want to show you now. <coughs> now. <coughs> 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 Excuse me, furball. So let me introduce you to the race bicycle. It's a very beautiful design. We worked really hard on it, almost a year, and uh, we did many iterations. Remember this, the pedal? I've shown it in a few clips before. Well, there it is. Uh, that's why I made it for. This part here was really cool. I'm a hard surface modeler, so I like to do very crazy parts. This one was really nice to do. And there's also another nice one at the back, the brake. The brake was uh, quite a challenge. There it is. You see, it's a really complex part and it was fun to do. Now, what we wanted to do for the design team is to be able to choose the colors of the bicycle on the real geometry. So, how could we do this? Well, let's do it like a video game, like when you can customize your bicycle or your race car or whatever. So, I have this little locator here, this empty, that I can move and switch different colors on the bicycle. And I can also go to custom properties and do it manually. I can do my own colors. So there's also a dual color version. This one has a different color on top and the bottom. And you can see the logo on the side is a different one also. So I had to control all this stuff with this little empty here that I move up and down. So if I go up here, this is custom colors. On this one, there's a, another empty that's called the master. And this one has all these custom attributes. That's, that's the master. And these custom attributes can be modified to change the color of the bicycle. So I can decide the color of the frame, I can decide the color of the stickers, I can decide the color of the race logo on the side, I can decide if I want it metallic or if I want it matte. I have total control on the entire bicycle for both shaders, the ones with the strips and the one with dual color. And I also added a switch so I can isolate the frame. So now I will show you how it's been done. It looks complicated, but it's not that complicated after all. So basically what I'm doing is I'm switching shaders and colors. So I have a shader for the dual color and I have one for the strips. When I move my empty, you can see the value changes here and that switches from one shader to the other. Now to change the color per shader, we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper. I'm gonna click on the shader group to see what's inside. All right, so it looks a little bit complicated, but actually it's not, it's uh, quite simple. We'll see how it works. So let's go for, uh, let's start with one shader, let's start with the box one. This one here, you can see I have two colors, one is for the stripes and the other one is for the color of the bicycle itself. Same thing goes for the pink shader. Now, I should have used an RGB node instead of a RAM, but I didn't even know it existed when I did this. That was a long time ago. And uh, same thing for the custom stripes, but you see this one, the RGB values, these are the RGB, are driven by the custom attributes that I was playing with before. On the master node. The divide is because I made my custom attribute going from 0 to 255 and the color range goes from 0 to 1 in the color picker so I had to divide it by 255 and then I combined them together into an RGB node. So you see here if I change the attribute here is going to change the value. Okay so now how do I switch from one color to another? I use this switch node here that I found somewhere on the internet. Link is in the description. And it's a very, very simple script. What it does is, if we look inside, it's a bit complicated. We don't really care what's inside. Let's go back. Bonks. 
Okay, so what it does is you just plug stuff into channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever you want. Then you just choose which channel you want to use. In my case, there's a value that drives which channel, and this is decided by the empty I use here. So if I change, you see now it's at 6, now it's at 7. This is actually the Z value of my empty. So now my empty is at 7 in Z, which makes the value at 7, and it plugs the color 7, which is cherry and this output goes straight into the color of the shader. I use a similar setup to change the logo on the side because you can see here now it's a plain logo, but if I go to the white jewel color, it's a different logo, so I had to create a switch for this one too. Okay, so before your head blows up, let's write on something simple like a sphere because everything always works on a sphere. So let's go with the basics. We're gonna change the roughness of the sphere using this empty here. It's quite simple actually. You see the value here, if I change it from zero to one, it changes the roughness, right? So what we wanna do is use this one here to change it. So the translation in X will change the roughness. And this is how you do it. You just select here, you go add driver. Now all I have to do is to decide which object is gonna drive my roughness. It's gonna be my roughness empty, it's the location in X, and that's it, you are done. For some unknown reason, Blender always had like this random number after var, you don't need it. Var represents a variable, which means the value that's gonna change. Now the position in X of my empty will drive the roughness. So if you look here, it's at 0.41, here it's at 0.41. So when you move it, it just connects together. We're going to do the same thing for the RGB for the color, so I have my three empties here. So let's go to color, select the red, add a driver, punks, and same thing. We're going to choose which one is going to drive it. It's going to be the red, and it's going to be the location in X. You see it added 0.8 here. Why? I have no idea. Just remove it, get rid of it, and you're done. Same thing with the green, and same thing with the blue. And now I can change the color of my sphere, the RGB. Here we go. Now you want to make sure you don't go too far. You want to limit it between 0 and 1. And you see now I'm at like something crazy like 50, whatever. There's no such thing as a 50 value for my blue. It stops at 1. So what we're going to do is add a constraint. It's going to be a limit constraint. And we're just going to limit it in X and maximum and minimum. Say the minimum is 0, maximum is 1, and make sure you affect transform so that now it's going to be blocked between 0 and 1. You can also block the other axis if you want to make sure your locator will not move in different directions. Let's do the same thing for the visibility. I'm not talking about the alpha, I'm talking about turning the object on and off. So what you can do is add the driver directly on the visibility here for render. So add a driver, same thing as before, we're just going to select which object is going to drive it. In this case, it's going to be our visibility empty. And again, it's going to be the transition in X. Now it says var plus false, we can leave it like this, that's fine. And now if we move our visibility slider, it's just going to turn it on and off. But you have to make sure that you copy your expression, your driver, from this object to the visibility on screen also. Because the other one is just for render. So now let's try again, see if it works. Go on and off also. Same thing for this one, we're gonna add a constraint to make sure it stays between zero and one. Okay, we're done. Now what if we had more than one object, like on the bicycle we had a ton of them. We don't want to copy the driver on every object. It would be completely insane, it would be very difficult to manage. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete all these drivers that we did and we're gonna create new ones. But instead of doing it on the objects, we're gonna take out both objects and we're gonna put them into a collection. And on the collection, we're gonna add the driver. So let's call it spheres. And now you can go straight on the collection and create your driver. Oh, it's not possible. So what are we going to do? We're going to create an instance of the collection. So you just go instance to scene. And on this one, we can add the driver. Make sure that you turn off the visibility for this one because you want to make sure that you won't see it at the rendering time. You don't want to render it twice. So we create the same expression. We're going to go air visibility and we're going to add the same expression. It was false before. Let's put it back to false. We are almost done, we just need to copy the driver to the visibility on screen, like we did before. Boom, okay, all right, now it works on both objects. I made a mistake when I recorded this, make sure you turn off the collection itself, otherwise it's gonna render twice the same object on top of each other. Now let's see how we can switch colors. So in the switch node, you can decide a color directly in it, so you pick a color, 
and then you can connect it to anything you want. So it can be in the base color, but it could be in the specular, it could be in whatever you want. So, and of course, if we want to switch colors, we're going to do it in the base color. And if I change the channel, let's go shade it here. If I change the channel, you can see that it's switching from one color to another. Now, this channel I just did here, I can drive it with an empty like we did before. So, take my empty here, I add a driver, I choose my slider, it's going to be location in X again, variable, remove whatever they added there, just want the variable and you're done. So now if you move this, we're changing colors. You can see I added the snap here to make sure I snap exactly on the right value. Now here's the cool part, you can plug anything you want in the color. So I could create a checkerboard, a Voronoi, and a noise texture, plug them in different channels. And when I switch channels, you can see it changes to anything I plugged into the channels. Yeah! Okay, now let's see how we can switch the entire shader. So we're gonna create a new shader, we're gonna create a mix shader node, we're gonna create a new empty to drive it and same thing as we did before we're just going to create an expression that's going to drive the factor. All right you know how it works it's getting boring it's the same thing you add a driver you decide which empty you're going to use x location. Anybody from the blender institute here please remove these random numbers it's just create a mess. Oh now okay we move this from 0 to 1 and we switch our shader and we're very happy. Yeah! Ah, oh, shut up! You can use drivers on anything, like in this case. You see, I'm gonna select the cube and I'm gonna put the driver on the rotation in X. So I'm gonna add my driver, I'm gonna select my slider, and uh, I'm gonna use my location in X and remove all the crap there. I don't need, bang, bang, bang. Okay, it's gone. And now what it does is that when I move this, it changes the rotation of the object. So the translation influences the rotation. Let's say you make a clock. So you select a small hand and you create an expression on it that's going to say the rotation in Y is going to be driven by, and now you select your object, it's going to be the big hand and it's going to be its rotation in Y also. But now they're going to be exactly the same. So here, now you add something. You're going to do this variable divided by 60. So now if I turn this one, the other one will turn 60 times slower. It's very useful when you do gears and stuff like this. The last thing I want to show you is how to add a custom attributes. I will take my master here and if I click on the little orange square here, I can add an attribute. So I will edit it, I will give it a name, we'll call it for example cube translation in X because this is what we want to move, it can be any name. Now the property value, if it's 1.0 like this, that means it's going to be a float number, it can, can be any number. If you change it to just 1 instead of 1.0, it's going to be an integer, meaning it's going to change for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No decimals. Okay, so we're going to put it back to what it was before, 0 0.1. The default value will be 0, it could be anything you want, and the minimum is uh, 0, maximum is going to be, let's say, 10. And we click OK. Now we want to copy that attribute here. So we're going to go here and say copy data path. Okay, now it's copied. Let's go to the cube and we're going to assign it into the location in X. So here, same thing as before, we add a driver. But this time it's not going to be an object that's going to drive it. It's going to be a property of the object. So we're going to change this to single property. We're going to choose which object is going to drive it, which is our master. And for the path here, you just paste what you copied before. Paste like in copy paste. So paste, here you go. Make sure you don't have anything in the expression that you don't need on top here. Everything, was, okay, plus zero means nothing. And now we're done. So if I take this and I change the property, you can see I'm moving the cube now. It's moving with the, you know, decimal numbers. If I edit my expression here, my attribute, I put one here now you will see that when I move the cube it's going to move in increments without any decimals just like that one two three four five name a dinosaur that's about to become instinct because it couldn't keep up with evolution <laughs>